and this is a delayed grid start. It's a full handicap start. It's uh, based on the second fastest lap times of the afternoon. So first away was uh, Yom Lin. The ones we're looking out for, and this is the scenario in the championship because it is still nip and tuck for the overall championship between Shane Parsons and uh, Mark Walters. Second uh, or third group getting away there. Warren Tunley in the battle won the 1600cc uh, championship chase. But the overall situation is this at the moment Shane Parsons has a 28 point advantage over Mark Walters. But if Walters can finish within five, or should I say, if Parsons finishes over five or six positions behind Mark Walters, he will win the championship. Add into the scenario, El Stewart, the fact that Shane Parsons has got problems with the gearbox in his car. Yeah, Shane's, Shane's having difficulties uh, downshifting, uh, and it was noticeable in his lap times in the last race. He was a couple of seconds down, uh, and there's a couple of cars you'll see starting at the back that were actually quicker than him in the last race, although they haven't featured overall. So, uh, yeah, really, if Mark can get five places up, uh, he's got the championship. So this is unfolding before our very eyes once again here in this closely competitive Honda Cup field brought to you by Motel Oils. Yeah, Mark, and Mark Walters has already Mark Walters has got the jump. He's already out in front of Shane. Uh, and, and that's car number 12, Ryan McCarthy. Ryan McCarthy. Yep, he's off. Going into the gravel here at Mighty Manfield. Now, can he drive out? The next thing, no sign of the safety car yet. So Yun Lin is the race leader in second place. It's uh, the girls' day out here at Manfield because Hilary Ashworth in second place. Gary Morrell, who had problems in race one, is third. Then it's Kevin Varney. Now, we talked a little bit off air, and we think that Kevin Varney, who is the production car champion of New Zealand, having his first run in the Honda, he could maybe steal this, Ellen. Yeah, yeah, Kev's a great driver, and he could be the dark horse of the day. Low-powered car, but driving experience. If he can get a gap at the front, it'll be hard for the back guys to catch him. You're watching there, car number 44. And that is Gavin Boyne. He's had his problems, but this is the championship here. Mark Walters and Shane Parsons. And remember, we said that Parsons has got a question mark, and it's a pretty big question mark over, I think, the gears between fourth that were like getting from fourth to fifth. Yeah, well, obviously, in this sort of racing, you're shifting up, up and down from fourth to fifth and fifth back to fourth. And if the gears balk, you can lose valuable seconds. Uh, I think Mark's aware of it. Mark's pushing fairly hard at the start, obviously, trying to put pressure on Parsons to make a mistake. And uh, Parsons needs to keep in contact and also be wary there are cars behind him and potentially a quicker. Pretty amazing when you think after six rounds, and I know that they both had problems in the previous round at Hampton Downs that the championships come down to the last race of the series. Sure, and it always seems to happen when you've got guys running a full season. Uh, they have ups and downs, they'll have, they'll have bad runs, but it always seems to be that there's always three or four really close at the finish. Now, Al, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Were you the handicapper? Have you done the deed here? Are we going to see I a I have, I finish? have, and, you know, uh, every time we run this meeting, you know, there's people that are not happy, but uh, we can only do our best, and often when we have a safety car come out, the whole uh, race changes again. Well, that's right. That certainly negates the, uh, the handicaps. Just looking at David Harker there, car number 27. It's interesting. When we do the handicaps, it's based on the fastest lap times. Some drivers can consistently drive at uh, within a second a lap, and some drivers will have you know three or four seconds a lap, depending on the traffic. So a lot of it depends who's in front of them and how fast they can get through the traffic. Um, like Martin Dunn's a really experienced bike racer. You see him in his DC5, and he really works the traffic, gets through quickly, although his car's not the fastest in the field. Car number 35, this is Nathan Strachan. Now, he's come from 35 seconds back. Remember, it was a delayed grid start, so the faster boys are trying to cut their way through the field. And you see there, Shane Parsons starting to work over Tim Pollard. Going with him is all press in the 12 car. Richard G caught up in that battle as well. And it's going to be really, really hard because there's a, there's a big field of these cars out there. The traffic's getting a little bit hectic. Yeah, mid-race, this, this is where the race starts. The, the traffic's starting to bunch. And the guys that can make it through the gaps. You'll see Mark Parsons there, so he's got about a three, he's jumped up, three cars up now. If he can put a few cars uh, between him and Shane, uh, you know, he, he might make the break. Well, that's right. Ellen said to me that he probably needs to be five positions or better in front of the 52. There is Shane Parsons, and two or three cars up the road is Mark Walters. So it's going to be interesting. Tim Pollard not uh, willing to give up the spot there to Tony Allpress. Across the stripe they go once again. The action coming from the back of the field. It is still Yom Lin out in the front. But there is the man we've been talking about. Car number 36. This is Mark Walters. He's trying to get around the inside of uh, Martin Dunn yeah, Martin there. Martin Dunn, yeah. And uh, Martin will give him room, but not much. And you see Mark look over as if to say, thanks, <laughs> yeah. thanks mate, for nothing. He needs to get cars between himself and Parsons. 
It's a different class battle, but the overall championship is right there. Walters versus Parsons. Yeah, the, the, the overall trophy is, is always for the outright win. It, 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 the small cars are rewarded for their class results, but people are really going for this overall win. And yeah, as we said, it's very close. You can see it's almost like the first lap of the race. There is congestion, it's working through the gaps, uh, and these guys have got to make quick decisions. Yeah, and you just got a glimpse of the chequered flag on the front bonnet of uh, Shane Parsons' car, so I just wonder if he's just trying to cover this man. This is Mark Walters. Nathan Strachan will be the next one that falls victim to him. Parsons is in that bunch, so he hasn't got the five cars he requires. Have a look on the left-hand side of your screen as they go down the back straight, trying to dive down the inside. That is Shane Parsons. Three cars, I think it is, I counted this time, between himself and Walters. Walters onto the front straight now, Strachan in behind him. Here is Parsons, looking to make a move on uh, the uh, the 55 car there. Can't quite get the pass done. Further back through the field, car number 27 was one of our early front runners. Just uh, the handicap starting to bite now for David Harker. This is Shane Parsons, though. The yeah. Admark ITM Honda looking to clinch a championship here that has been so hardly fought over the six rounds. Twice they've been to Hampton Downs, and Manfield looks like it will be the decider. You know, as the fast guys get on the back of cars that are only a second slower, it's quite difficult to get past, and the more experienced racers won't give way to the, the faster car, so it is difficult to get past. Yes. Parsons just having a bit of a job getting around Tunley there now, manages to do so. Just to remind you, if you're watching uh, Motul Honda Cup for the first time, there's races within races here. We've got four classes up for decision, and this is the final round of the championship. The 1.6-litre cars are H1. The H2s are 1.8. The H3s, you'll see the windscreen banner, uh, the 2-litre cars, and the H4 are the older 2.2-litre cars. So a real driver's class, you'd have to say, but we concentrate on this championship battle. There you see the insignia on the windscreen denoting the class. So, you know, some of the slower cars still out, still out front. You know, they've done well. They've got away at the start. Uh, but Mark's making, uh, making distance on them. And I think Shane Parsons is driving intelligently. He knows he's got to be within three or four cars. He's giving Mark a bit of space, but he's keeping in contact as well. So this is the race leader. This is Gary Morrell. Behind him, it is uh, car number 32 now, and that's Rick Wakelin. There is Walters moving into third place. And having a bit of a fight to do so, but I think by the end of this, that was someone just going off in the grass there in the background, and there is Parsons. Now you get the feeling, Al, that maybe Shane Parsons is just doing enough here. Maybe he's I, just I think he's driving. I think he's driving Mark. an intelligent race. You know, if he pushes too hard, he could do some damage, and, and if he doesn't finish the race, he's out. So he's only going fast enough, I think, to to make sure that he's got Mark in his distance, and he, he's he can count the cars and he can see what's in front of him. And I guess the last thing that Mark Walters wants to do is get involved in maybe getting round the slower sure, car. Sure, exactly. He's got, to, he's got to drive intelligently too and make sure that uh, he gets. His, it's all about the placings now, not about the time. So all Mark has to do is to stay out in front. Well, they come round the big sweeper here at Manfield onto the front straight once again. We'll have a new race leader when they cross the stripe, and it will be Mark Walters. And Shane Parsons just putting the uh, 27 of Wakeland behind him, so he moves up into third place now. The meat in the sandwich uh, looks to be Gary Morrell. 22, one of the uh, front-running 1600cc cars. That is Gary Wilson, and he's in a battle with uh, uh, Warren Tunley. They call him nuts in the 1600 class uh, championship as well. So pro quite a bit going on here. Yeah, well, Shane's been driving very intelligently, and you had two laps to, to, put, to pull Mark in. He's picked his passing so he can pass cleanly, not get involved with any other cars, so he's in the spot that he needs to be. Uh, he's not, he, he doesn't even have to win the race to win the championship, and obviously that's what, that's what he's planning to do. We're just looking at the rest of the field there. There is Morrell right in behind him, Tunley. Go back to uh, Martin Dunn and Trevor Strong. He was the fastest... Uh, of uh, the cars in the day. So he started from the very back. Tim Pollard looking to work on uh, Tunley there. There is uh, Triple One. Now that is Kevin Varney. Now we thought he might have been able to steal this race. It wasn't to yeah, be. Well, yeah, no, back the wrong horse there, but uh, you never really know what's going to happen in the handicap races. 
the Gary Wilson making a bit of a late charge here as they come onto the front straight and uh, they will see the last lap board so the championship is coming to an end the race is coming to an end here at Mighty Manfield and at this stage it looks like it is coming in the favour of Shane Parsons Martin Dunn trying to hold up Richard Gee there the battle for the miners as they work their way out of Toyota and up into the infield S's here at Manfield yeah, Richard G and Trevor Strong did the uh, fastest lap times in the previous race, but they haven't been able to get through the traffic, uh, and it's often the way. The least experienced drivers uh, often suffer. 78 there of all presses uh, followed each of them right around these uh, eight laps. It's Richard G doing PR duties here for V8 Super Tourers, as well as climbing into his Honda and racing his heart out here. Looking for racing room is uh, Trevor Strong. We've seen that in every race so far. The bonnet latch needs a bit of attention on Richard It, it, it sure does, yeah. <laughs> All press going with them, so this battle of the two-litre cars. Meantime, at the front of the field, now Shane Parsons doesn't need to pass him, but I just wonder yeah, if he wants to right. put a period on this championship and think, I might just try and drive around the outside of this man, Mark Walters. It's going to be Walters that will see the chicken flag first, but unfortunately he will win the battle, but he won't win the war because the man in second place will. Shane Parsons clinches the Motel Honda Cup. Great finish coming here in the two leader cars. Very close racing indeed as across the line in third place was Martin Dunn. Then it was Trevor Strong, Richard Gee and Tony Allpress. Gary Wilson, the first of the 1600cc cars. I wonder if he's done enough to clinch the class win. Sportsmanship of plenty. You see Mark Walters cheering on Shane Parsons. But that man on your screen is the Honda Motel Cup champion for 2012.